Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Donatello Elia. I'm a junior scientist at the Advanced Scientific Community Division at SMC uh, Foundation uh, uh, located in, uh, in, uh, in Lecce, uh, Italy. Uh, my activities are in the field of computer science and data science, and in particular, uh, high performance data analytics, uh, climate data analysis, and high performance computing. In the, uh, this first part of the high performance and data analytics uh, and the visualization session, I'm going to focus more on the high performance data an analytics uh, aspects and the OFIDA framework. Uh, if you have any, any questions, uh, uh, I guess you can write them in the chat and then I'll check. Uh, at, at, at the end of this uh, of this uh, of this slide, so the presentation consists of uh, two main uh, main uh, parts. Uh, in this first part, I will be providing more of the background about the performance data analytics and the Ophidia framework. Uh, whereas in the second part, there will be a practical part showing a tutorial about uh, Ophidia uh, that can be run on the on the virtual machine. To to use this, you will need a, a Docker image but I'll show you later how to, how to set up the environment will be quite quick. Uh, so I now start with the intro, introductory slide uh, about the high performance data analytics. So as you, as you may know, the increase in the uh, scientific data sizes that we are experiencing in the, in the last 10-15 uh, uh, years is posing uh, several challenges for the management, storage, and uh, analysis of these big data volumes. And this is also uh, an issue in the context of, the, of uh, climate, uh, climate data, of course. So some key challenges to actually support large-scale uh, analysis are, are represented inside. Uh, as a first uh, point, non-trivial climate uh, analysis involve, uh, uh, involving multiple input data sets. Uh, and so these uh, need to be uh, gathered or, or, uh, or uh, downloaded from uh, uh, Data services such as the uh, Earth System Grid uh, Federation and uh, stored in the in the local environments. This step is already uh, a barrier for 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 scientists if we think at gigabytes and terabytes of, of, of data due to the time uh, which is needed to to download this data. Uh, but but it appears clear that if we think at a petabyte scale, this would simply not be doable uh, to due to the massive uh, uh, data size. So new approaches to reduce data movement are, are needed, such as uh, server-side uh, data ana analytics, where the computation is moved close to the data center. Another issue uh, is that uh, with complex climate uh, analysis can include uh, hundreds of data analytics uh, operators, which may use also different tools and, uh, and library, leading to a very time-consuming process to se set up the environment uh, and to uh, prepare uh, the various script uh, with, uh, with proper uh, para parallelization. So supporting end-to-end -end workflows is another key, key aspect for, for handling uh, this very complex and, uh, and uh, being uh, analyzed. And also an another uh, useful feature uh, for this uh, big, uh, big workflows would be the possibility to also manage, uh, manage uh, failures and concurrent uh, execution. Another um, the key, uh, key challenge is that uh, this complex uh, climate uh, analysis uh, are critically de dependent on the av availability of, uh, of uh, scalable software infrastructures. Uh, so to this point, uh, uh, new approaches joining high-performance high computing and uh, big data could be, could be useful to address these uh, challenges and effectively support climate uh, analysis as, uh, at large scale. However, the integration of the software in the uh, big data and HPC ecosystem is not, uh, is not trivial, since uh, there are important differences uh, in, the, in the two uh, ecosystems. Uh, so this is a very important aspect uh, because algorithms computing and uh, data analysis are both uh, considered uh, fundament fundamental parts of the, of the uh, analysis process and, and, and for advancing on scientific uh, discovery. So the software community has been uh, uh, looking with a strong interest in the last few years to the convergence of uh, the solution technologies in the two software ecosystem in order to combine the benefits from both the approach from big data 
and high performance computing and, and hence uh, enable uh, high performance data ana uh, analytics. So I guess in the challenges to the convergence of these uh, two ecosystem is, uh, is also relevant for, uh, for climate sciences. And, uh, and this is an, an active area of, uh, of research. So new computing paradigms, uh, data management approaches and higher level programming models are being uh, investigated. Uh, so that to, to, in order to devise uh, solutions which are able to cope with uh, the complexity of these uh, of these large scale uh, volumes and uh, infrastructures, the work that we've been doing with the Ophidia frameworks towards high performance data an analytics goes into this uh, uh, di direction also. So I now move to the Ophidia high performance analytics framework, which tries to address some of the challenges just presented. Uh, Ophidia is an open source uh, project developed by uh, the, uh, uh, the the team uh, where I also where I'm so, where I'm so part of at the Advanced uh, the Scientific Computing Division at the CMC, uh, and we started uh, this this project from uh, uh, 2013. Uh, so Ophelia aims to tackle scientific data intensive uh, analysis uh, on multidimensional data, primarily in the climate change domain. However, the, um, the framework has also been uh, used in other scientific uh, the domains, like for example, uh, astrophysics. Uh, the framework targets high performance data analysis by joining aspects from HPC and data analytics uh, uh, approach. Some of the key aspects of this framework are that uh, it defines a service side approach, promoting a shift from clients and sequential uh, so solution towards uh, parallel I.O. and uh, analysis. It implements an internal uh, array-based storage model to manage large amounts of multidimensional scientific data by leveraging the data cube abstraction from online analytical uh, processing systems. It supports interactive analysis as well as uh, uh, complicated experiments, for example, in the, in the, in the form of, uh, of uh, workflows. One of the key design uh, principles in the, the Ophelia framework is the uh, shift of the computation over the server side. Uh, so I just described uh, in, uh, in, the, in the previous slide, the increase in the data volume poses several challenges which uh, require a novel solution. And one of these is, uh, uh, could be the, the, the shift of the, of the computation on the, on the server side. Uh, so when we initially uh, designed the Ophelia framework, the typical uh, workflow, which uh, uh, to some extent is, is still uh, followed today, uh, consisted uh, in uh, uh, in the searching and uh, and, and downloading the, the the data from the um, from data nodes, and then work on the impl implementation of the analysis uh, locally. Uh, typical um, do domain-specific uh, um, tools for uh, for uh, data analysis uh, were often desktop-based and uh, provide at most limited support for uh, for parallels. But and anyway, uh, this was uh, most of the times limited just to a single node when available. So, Fida proposed a shift in this this paradigm by moving the processing on the server side close to the HPC cluster and the data center where parallel analysis can be conducted like, uh, using uh, uh, bigger computing infrastructure with a high performance data analytics uh, so, uh, solution. In, uh, so uh, with this approach, only the final uh, re results of the processing, which typically consists of few megabytes, is, uh, is uh, downloaded by the, by the user on the, on the client side. Uh, the, the user will just need in this uh, in this case, to install very lightweight uh, client uh, tools, uh, which uh, interact with the, with the server side for the uh, computation of the uh, data analysis, and this allows to take better advantage of the re resources on the on the data center, and also achieve a better separation of uh, of concerns from the components, as the client side can focus more on usable interfaces and uh, graphical uh, uh, also graphical interfaces, while the server side can focus on efficient analysis. And this approach can also relieve the final user from a uh, um, complex uh, setup of the, of the local system and encourage also more uh, pro, pro, productive uh, uh, approach. 
Um, so Bootopedia we tried to implement this, uh, this server-side shift. Uh, Ophidia aims to provide a complete software stack for multidimensional uh, uh, scientific uh, climate, uh, let's say, data management and, uh, and, uh, and analysis. From an application point of view, Ophidia provides support for uh, several uh, features, including time series processing, uh, data subsetting, multimodal and sample analysis, high, throu high throughput computing uh, for data re reduction, data transformation, metadata management, uh, and also complex workflow. In this slide, you can see uh, a few examples of uh, plots that have been generated starting from uh, output pr pr produced with uh, uh, Ophidia. Uh, using uh, Ophidia, users uh, can submit their uh, analysis from the local environment to the, to the server side, uh, where the computing components of the, of the framework are, are, uh, are running. Execution can be triggered locally by using the OPH term, which is a, um, plan, uh, a command line interface, which is uh, similar to a, to a Linux shell, or the uh, Ophidia Python binding, which are called by Ophidia, that we'll uh, explore better uh, later in this presentation. Uh, the client requests are then managed by the Ophidia server, uh, which uh, uh, translates the user request into, uh, into uh, jobs which are su submitted on the uh, HPC cluster. And uh, this allows uh, moving the, the processing towards the data center, requiring just a minimal setup on the local uh, node that could be, for example, just a simple browser to use the PyFIDA module like from uh, Jupyter Notebook. Different execution modes are supported by the system, so a user can run interactive or batch uh, batch processing, but also define uh, uh, more complex workflows or create Python-based uh, notebooks or Python applications. So after this, this quick overview of the video framework, I'll show some of the core aspects of, uh, of, of the platform that will be useful um, for the tutorial part. So this is the video architecture, which consists of, uh, of four layers, as you can see in this slide. And uh, the, archi the architecture is designed to be uh, modular and extensible so that the number of components can be scaled and adapted independently uh, in order to support different deployment scenarios, like for example, uh, high performance computing clusters or um, cloud, uh, cloud platforms, also single node uh, scenarios or, or, uh, or uh, distributed nodes also. Uh, so I start to describe the key aspects starting from the uh, from the lowest layer, which is the uh, distributed uh, uh, re resources for the for the, the data storage. Ophelia defines a um, scalable storage model for efficiently managing multidimensional scientific data and exploit the data cube abstraction from online analytical processing. Uh, this model basically maps multidimensional data to a representation which is independent from the number of uh, dimensions. And I'll show an example in a, in a few slides uh, just to, to, to better understand how this actually works. Uh, so the data is partitioned in a hierarchical fashion and distributed over the storage layer. Um, to simplify the, um, the description, basically storage la the storage layer you can feed that can in this storage layer, the multidimensional data are organized in binary arrays according to one or more dimension, which uh, are called implicit dimension. All the remaining one are uh, referred as explicit dimension are to, to translated to a key identifying uh, each, each uh, spe specific uh, array. So at, at, at the end, what we have in, a, in, a, in our storage model is just a simple table with two columns, an identifier and, uh, and, a, and a binary arrays. Uh, then the... Uh, of EADB uh, is the system catalog of the of uh, of EAD and is used to uh, uh, map, for example, data fragmentation and track metadata associated with each uh, uh, data cube. To be more practical, to be more practical, um, the slide shows an example of uh, how an SCDF file. Uh, with, with climate data on the, we can see on the on the left side of this slide, 
can be uh, represented with uh, this uh, data cube uh, up, up structure, which is shown on the, on the right side of the of the slide. And uh, and uh, here we, a data cube um, can consist um, basically of a, of a measure, which is this numerical value. Uh, in the example, this is the the temperature, which which can be analyzed according to one or more uh, dimensions. That in this particular case. Uh, are the latitude, longitude, and the time from the NetCDF file. To facilitate the understanding, the values uh, in the file in the cube uh, actually represent the, uh, the index of a particular temperature value based on the three dimensions. So uh, if you take, for example, the point on the uh, lower uh, left corner uh, in the cube, uh, this is the one which is related to the first value in each of the coordinate uh, variables associated with the uh, three day by dimension and each slice of the cube uh, with different colors contains uh, the values for the whole latitude and longitude grid for a given time, time step. Uh, we can now see um, how the same NCDF file can be mapped to the Ophelia storage model. The time dimension is typically used as implicit dimension because time series analysis are very common. And uh, in this way, the, the temperature values are uh, organized like contiguous in a binary array based on the index of the time dimension, which uh, which is uh, the implicit dimension in this, this case. And uh, this type of organization makes time series analysis uh, much more efficient because we have uh, because we are, because the uh, the values are are stored contiguously in a binary array. So when we access this uh, this array to for uh, for uh, running uh, processing, this would be much uh, much faster to access the whole array of contiguous values rather than uh, jump on a on a more sparse structure to to access uh, uh, single values. Uh, it's important to, to mention uh, that uh, even though in this example we're using a single di dimension for the uh, uh, for building the binary arrays, this can also be applied to uh, more than more than one di di dimension. The remaining dimensions, which are logical, uh, logical and longitude represent the explicit dimensions and are used uh, to reference the binary uh, arrays in the table. So each combination of explicit dimension uh, values refer univocally to a single binary uh, array as, uh, as shown here in this, uh, here in this table. Uh, actually, in Ophidia, we do not store the uh, values of the dimension, but rather these are uh, tr tr translated to a numerical uh, function into a, a single I identifier, uh, which uh, univocally uh, identifies uh, a, a, a single binary array. So at the end, uh, we just have a table with just uh, two, two columns, the uh, key identifier and the binary uh, array. Another important aspect uh, to mention is that um, According to the, the, the dimensions are, are, are mapped as uh, expli uh, explicit and implicit, uh, the values in the array can follow a different order than those in the NetCDF file. In fact, Ophelia allows uh, to reorganize the data lay layout online during the data loading phase. And this uh, allows users to place the, da the data in the, in the binary uh, array uh, uh, in order to uh, map the the best uh, access pattern that will be used uh, during the analysis. And uh, this can uh, improve the eff efficiency of the whole uh, ana analytic session. In the given example, uh, the data is uh, structured so that uh, the values of the temper associated to consecutive time step for a given latitude and longitude point are stored contiguously in the uh, array. And I said this will, uh, will, uh, will uh, favor time, time series processing. As a final step, this very long table that we can see in the slide is uh, horizontally partitioned into uh, multiple fragments, which are then distributed over the, the nodes to, uh, to, to allow for, uh, for parallel uh, processing. This partition fragmentation is, turn, is uh, turn transparent for the user as data cubes appear uh, as a single immutable uh, object. Besides the data, Metadata is also uh, associated to each, to each data cube. Um, and the framework keeps also track of data cube provenance by linking each cube uh, to the one that has been uh, generated from. 
uh, to manage the, the data cubes of feed that defines also uh, a virtual cube space uh, where cubes are uh, organized in folders as in a, a tra tra traditional file system and a set of related operators for listing the cubes and moving them, uh, moving them from one folder to the other or search for them based on the data are also uh, provided by the, by the system to, to manage this, uh, this uh, virtual file system uh, cube space. Then the second layer from the bottom of this uh, architecture uh, consists of the YAML and uh, an analytics nodes, which uh, can run uh, one or more uh, I/O uh, and uh, analytics servers. For video support different types of, uh, of server, such as a native in memory one and a MySQL based uh, uh, RDBMS, uh, which was the initial uh, solution supported by uh, Ophelia. The native analytics server, which is now the, 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 the default option, uh, takes care of managing the data cube fragment as, as well as loading and storing the fragments, um, the fragments from and to the, the, the NetCVF files, and also performing the data analytics uh, operations. The, the server is optimized to work on multi-dimensional uh, uh, arrays that they, they directly in, uh, in memory. It can be extended also to support additional storage backends besides memory. It provides a query-based interface for the execution of uh, op operations on the fragments and support a wide set of lower-level functions uh, for uh, data analysis and transformation, which are, which are called of, of the primitives. Uh, these array-based uh, primitives are implemented as user-defined functions, uh, so that new primitives can be easily uh, plugged into the, the uh, in-memory engine also at, at runtime. So far, uh, about 100 primitives have been implemented to support operations like uh, mathematical, statistical, and uh, aggregation functions, predicate evaluation, compression uh, routines, regression, and uh, array-based manipulation. Uh, the complete list of the primitives is uh, available at this link on the uh, documentation, uh, this link at the bottom of the slide. An interesting feature of the primitives is that they can be also nested into a single query in order to build more complex and efficient uh, expression. Uh, the primitives can be uh, run with the OPH apply operator, which is a very uh, powerful uh, operator, and we will see some example of this in the practical tutorial. The primitives are applied uh, to the binary arrays composing the data cube fragments and uh, use this uh, SQL-like interface, which allows specifying different options as well as the data type of input and output uh, of, the, of, the, of the binary uh, arrays. And this example shows a nested primitive applied to, the, to this input fragment composed of uh, five, uh, five rows. And uh, to extract in an in a atomic way uh, a sub array of this uncompressed data and then compute uh, the five statistical indexes uh, uh, associated to the, to the box plot. Um, so this is applied in each uh, binary array and we can, here we can see the, uh, the output fragment uh, which, is, which has been created based on this, uh, uh, this primitive. And on the bottom part of the slide there's the, the scientific representation of this processing. The next layer in the, in the architecture is the HPA runtime system, which can run on uh, multiple nodes in, uh, in order to distribute the, the processing. The runtime provides an environment for the execution of the uh, parallel operators. And in the last few years, the system uh, has, uh, has been re revised in order to target uh, uh, performance analytics scenarios at, uh, at a larger scale. So the runtime uh, system now uh, defines uh, an execution model supporting two levels of uh, parallelism. Uh, the first level is this uh, uh, data cube level, uh, which allows to run multiple tasks on different data in parallel. Uh, this can be thought of more a uh, high throughput computing uh, paradigm, whereas the fragment level uh, allows running the op operators in, uh, in parallel on the fragments composing a data cube by using a combination of uh, MPI and uh, multi-threading. So that the number of MPI process and, uh, and, uh, and threads can be tuned uh, in, in order to scale with, uh, with the size of the, of the data to be, to be processed. 
So Redis are applied on a whole data cube and interact with the underlying IO analytics server to coordinate the execution of the, of the primitives on the different fragments composing the, the cube. So the actual processing is done by the IO analytics servers while the operators uh, take care to coordinate the execution on the fragments and dispatch the, the queries to the, to the various servers. The framework provides uh, more than 50 operators, which can be run on the data cubes to perform uh, both data an analytics and metadata management. Uh, those applying data processing can be run in parallel, exploiting the runtime model just uh, uh, described. Well, metadata operators are instead mainly sequential since these have uh, limited resource re requirements. Uh, the table shows some of the main operators uh, uh, classifies based on the, um, their main feature. So some example of, of parallel data operators include uh, file import and export, uh, time series processing, data cube reduction and uh, subsetting. Uh, you can find a full list of, uh, of uh, operators at this link at the bottom part of the, of the, of the slide. Uh, here we can see um, uh, an example of uh, some data processing operators executed from the OVIDA terminal. On the left part, you can see the, uh, the actual output from the, from the terminal. While on the right part, there's a high level abstraction of what's happening on the, on the input data cubes. The operators are, are specified by using this uh, declarative uh, key value format. So after specifying the operator name, which is the OPH we reduce in this case, uh, the arguments are, uh, are pro provided as in this uh, key, key value uh, format and they're divided by, by, by semicolons. Uh, in this example, we assume that the fragment is uh, that the data cube is uh, divided in uh, four fragments, which are the slices, which are the slices in different colors in the cube. Uh, this is, of course, is uh, simplification because in practice, data is usually fragment over multiple dimensions. And uh, here we're running two uh, operators, uh, which uh, take as a, as, a, as arguments also the number of uh, of MPI uh, process to be used and the number of uh, of, of threads to be used. And uh, to in order to scale the uh, the processing on the on the fragments of of the, of these four fragments of the data cube. Uh, so uh, this, here we're running two data re reduction operation, which perform the average over different axes of the data cube. Uh, each one produces a new output uh, uh, a new output cube as a re re result, and uh, and we can see that the final cube there is a single value for. Um, for uh, for a uh, fragment. Oops. Sorry. This is another example of uh, operator. Uh, in this case, this is a metadata uh, management uh, operator, and uh, this is used. Uh, uh, this cube by your operator is used to track the provenance of a of a given uh, of a given uh, data cube. Uh, so this shows the set of uh, uh, operations apply starting from the input uh, file to the current data group that we are that we are uh, in the inspecting, and um, and here we can see in this uh, visualization uh, the how this operation have, have, have been applied. So this is a sequence starting from two uh, input files uh, applied various uh, operations, and then the, the one we are inspecting here is just this this last one. Then the upper layer of the architecture represents the front end of the platform, which is the Ophelia server. It exposes multiple interfaces for client uh, server interaction. And uh, to support interoperability, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have the su um, support for different standards, for example, a uh, web service exploiting SOAP uh, over, over HTTPS or uh, OGT uh, WPS compliant interface. The front end provides uh, the, the feature uh, to manage their, their connection and uh, from, from different users and to uh, handle authentication and authorization of these users. And moreover, it also manages the scheduling and submission and, and monitoring of the user request and can handle both single uh, tasks or workflow composed of many tasks. 
uh, as I said, different clients can be can can interact with uh, with the server. So beside the terminal and the Pio Fidia module, there can also be some uh, uh, WPS clients that can be used. The Fidia terminal, uh, as I already mentioned, re re resembles a Bash command line interface and provides many of the traditional uh, features of a Linux shell, like auto completion, command history management, uh, environment variable definition. Uh, Command aliases, variable substitution, and uh, but this has been uh, spe specifically implemented for the Affidia uh, commands. Uh, it also takes care of translating the user uh, commands into proper requests and submitting them to the server. Uh, although the Affidia module is uh, more commonly employed, the terminal can be very useful for executing fast and uh, testing of data an analytics uh, operators. Uh, for executing batch workflows, since uh, it uh, allows to graphically monitor the workflow execution for debugging experiments and also for exploring the, the file system. And in this uh, slide, we see an example of uh, of the list uh, command uh, showing the cubes in the in the virtual file system. Another important aspect uh, we focus. Uh, uh, in the implementation of the platform is the integration with the, with the HPC cluster in order to exploit the framework together with other jobs uh, on the same batch, batch scaler of the HPC infrastructure instead of uh, statically deploying uh, the, the system uh, and limiting somehow the, um, the amount of possible re resources that could be used. So we define the deployment megas which allows the user to dynamically deploy the set of IO analytics servers on the cluster um, based on the, the analysis workload. We also wanted to hide the complexity of the deployment from the user and make this process very easy. Uh, so we defined this uh, si simple uh, command shown in this slide. Uh, and uh, so that the, the user will just run the uh, deployment command at the beginning of our session and then the un un deployment one once the resources are not needed uh, um, anymore. And so uh, the, the server will uh, transparently in interact with the batch scheduling system to uh, request this uh, uh, re re resource uh, allocation. The system is uh, currently used on the Zeus cluster at the CMCC to easily scale the resources when needed for the uh, analysis. And this uh, mechanism also provides a multi-tenancy uh, so that the server takes care of managing the deployment for the, the different users. And uh, thanks to these multiple isolated instances of uh, IO and analytic, uh, analytics clusters can be deployed without uh, in interfering with each other by different users. Uh, in the case of the uh, tutorial that we're going to see later, this, uh, this won't be used because the container is the sort of a single node setup, but this is important in the HPC uh, clusters. Uh, besides single operators, Ovidia provides also support for workflows. Uh, so the system can manage execution of complex workflows composed of hundreds or thousands of analytical operators. Uh, the workflow management system uh, is part of the Ovidia server and takes care of handling, uh, takes care of parsing and uh, validating the workflow uh, document. And uh, also manages the submission of the various tasks based on the data and flow dependencies. Uh, as well as monitoring the task and the workflow progress. Uh, Ophelia um, defines a workflow schema in a JSON format that is able to uh, model direct acyclic uh, graphs, uh, which in simple terms can be uh, thought of uh, graphs where the edges have a direction and there are no cycles. And uh, these graphs are composed of Ophelia operators and, uh, and then the workflow manager uh, can also uh, handle uh, workflows which are composed of, of, uh, of other uh, sub-workflows, sub so creating very, very complex uh, representation. The workflow manager supports different uh, const uh, constructs. Um, so besides dependency specification, uh, for example, loops and uh, conditional can also be defined. Um, then it supports also the execution of parallel in independent branch. And uh, also as a feature to support error management. Uh, so providing interfaces to specify, specify how to handle errors. Like for example, what, what happens if a task uh, fails, if it has, be, has to be 
array resubmitted or it has, it has to be skipped, and what to do with the, with the following tasks. This slide shows some examples of uh, workflows that uh, we define with uh, Ophidia. And uh, okay, this is, was just a brief introduction uh, to, to this aspect due to uh, time, but if you, uh, you can get more info about this on the Ophidia website. Uh, we now move to the Pyophilia module, which will be, be extensively used in the tutorial part. Um, as you may know, uh, Python is one of the most used programming languages for data science. So, uh, also in uh, Ophelia, we created this uh, the Python bindings called Pyophilia that can be used to implement scientific Python application exploiting uh, all the Ophelia features. Uh, the module has been defined so that it can be immediately used uh, from Jupyter notebooks and in uh, conjunction with other Python modules. With respect to the terminal, it provides a more programmatic interface. And Pyophilia acts as a client and provides the, the feature to submit the operator uh, and manage the, the response from the server side. It takes care of managing basically all client-server interactions similarly to the Ophidia terminal. Uh, but it also allows to, uh, the user to manage a Python object which, which uh, refer to remote data cubes. The module provides uh, two main classes, uh, the client class and the cube class. The client class uh, uh, is, uh, let's say, very similar to the uh, terminal. It allows the submission of Ophelia operators by using the same uh, uh, key, key value format that we saw uh, in, the, in the terminals uh, slide. Uh, it is very flexible to use, but uh, slightly less straightforward than the cube class since uh, the full operator strings must be manually typed. The cube class instead is, uh, is, um, is, is more easy uh, to use since it provides a little group abstraction uh, for defining Python objects, which uh, reference the uh, data cubes on the server side. And specific methods are available for each uh, Ophidia operator, thus um, providing a more usable interface. And this will be the class that I mainly show in the tutorial. Ophidia uh, is available from the, Pyophilia is available from the main channels like uh, Conda Forge or uh, the Python package index. And the, the module where is already included in the training uh, container uh, together with the rest of the framework. So there's no need to download this for the tutorial. The Perfida module has been used uh, for different applications. Uh, so it can be combined together with modules such as Cartopy and Matplotlib and NumPy and in Jupyter Notebooks to implement uh, climate indicators um, such as tropical nights, as in days. Uh, so it's very, uh, um, well-known uh, climate indicators. And, uh, and the of Ophidia framework can be used for parallel processing of this climate data while the Python modules for the visualization of the maps. Um, this slide shows some of the notebooks uh, that we implemented with by Ophidia, and some of these were also be included in the tutorial uh, material which we covered in the, in the uh, second part of this, uh, of this uh, presentation. We also use the Pyophilia to implement um, slightly more complex applications such as, um, such as multimodal analysis where uh, the analysis is executed on uh, multiple models and, uh, in a distributed way. The Pyophilia interface tries to support performance and analytics by uh, providing a user-friendly interface hiding the complexity of the interaction with the uh, HPC inf infrastructure. Uh, so the operator file is in the data cube partitioning and the management can also be handled uh, from this uh, from this interface. Uh, the Python notebook in this slide shows an example of um, some uh, main main um, main aspects. So uh, the model allows to control the deployment and undeployment of the of the cluster, which is in this uh, second and uh, and last cell, and also to control the partitioning and distribution of the of the data cube by, uh, for example, specifying this number of host uh, and number of, of fragments during the, uh, the data cube import. And then we also can control the parallelism of the various uh, operators by specifying the number of cores and number of, uh, of, of threads that we want to use. And then with the export array uh, method in this uh, cell here, we can uh, actually move the data from the server side to the client side, then, then use it, for example, with other Python modules uh, to, create a, to create a map. Or a, or a plot. And uh, I'll, I'll show um, a more detailed example of usage of, uh, by, 
of Vidya uh, shortly. Uh, so uh, to conclude this, this first part of the presentation, I um, just want to give a brief recap of what, of, of what was shown in the last uh, half an hour. Uh, so as uh, said, several challenges must be addressed to enable high performance analytics for scientific and climate analysis. Ophelia tries to address some of these challenges uh, with a scalable architecture and distributed data model and parallel operators. The Pavilion module allows for an easy uh, ex exploitation of these features from notebooks. And, um, and, and we will see this in the, in the practical tutorial part. So, uh, so now I'll, uh, I'll move to, that, uh, to the, uh, the more practical part. And uh, I think I could take some questions, but to optimize uh, this process, uh, before uh, taking the question, I just show the instruction for the setup of the environment since uh, the Docker uh, container has to be uh, down downloaded on the on the on the VM, and uh, and then I'll check some questions while these are are, are being uh, uh, downloaded. So the tutorial in, uh, is based on a Jupyter notebook, which is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to run it your, yourself or, or whatever, you need to uh, set up an uh, Ophelia instance. Um, we provide an uh, only one Docker image for training purposes, which allows uh, the user to stop the environment very, very quickly. The only requirements are the Docker engine and clients, the Git command line and the web browser, uh, which are all available uh, on the Vita machine uh, for the summer school. So to get the um, Docker image, you can simply run this, this command, this Docker pool, which will download the, the image from, uh, from Docker Hub. You can get further information about this image uh, from this link. Um, maybe I can uh, I can copy this on the on the on the chat so that it's it's easier to to run them if you want to uh, download this uh, this Docker image. So just copy this on the on the chat since you you don't have access to the slide yet. So if you want to download the uh, Docker image, you can simply uh, run this command here. And then uh, this, will, this will take a few minutes. So in the meantime, you can also uh, download the training, uh, training material by cloning the, uh, the repository from, from GitHub. And uh, this contains uh, the notebooks and the inst instruction for the, for the tutorial part. And this should be very, very easy. Also in this case, I can copy the, the command in the, on the chat. So if you want to run this and uh, clone the the, the re repository. Once you have uh, this, you can then uh, you can then uh, go into this uh, folder, the Summer School 2021 HPD uh, HPD folder, and then you can download the data which is needed by the by the notebooks to for run for running the e examples, uh, which are uh, a, a couple of NetCF data from uh, from Smith Five Data Archive. You can simply uh, run the get data. Uh, script and uh, this this may require really may require also a couple of minutes uh, according to the to the network. Uh. So maybe I'll, I'll just uh, pause for uh, uh, a couple of minutes so that you can run this this command and uh, complete uh, the uh, set, the set, setup of the environment before uh, moving forward. Uh, in the meantime, I'll, I'll uh, look if there are any any questions. On the chat, or if you have any any question, um, please ask me. Okay, seems there are some some issues with. Um, actually. Um, I've tested this on the Ubuntu VM that was uh, that was prepared for the summer school. There should be a, a Docker pull uh, uh, command available. Not sure if uh, uh, someone was able to run this this command just to to double check about if it actually worked. Let's say.
Okay, so the question is, uh, do we need to, to use the FIDE VM or the Summer School VM? No, no, you need to use the Summer School VM, um, which was provided, I think, also for the other uh, uh, training and, uh, and uh, virtual labs. That the VM should contain the basic requirements for this uh, for this tutorial. The FIDE VM, let's say, it contains already an FIDE system, but it it not it does not contain, uh, for example, the the Jupyter. Uh, Jupyter notebook system in the Python uh, environment, so there might be some 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 things missing. So it's better to rely on the on the some school VM. Okay, I'm not sure if, if anyone was able to complete this this con this this comments before uh, proceeding further, because then there will be a couple of other steps just to start the start the system and uh, and have everything in place for the for the actual. Uh, uh, tutorial. Okay, so Docker pool works fine. Okay. Okay. Anyway, the the uh, the comments are on the on the chat, so I think we can move to the um, second uh, second set of uh, instructions. Um, so once uh, you have downloaded the uh, uh, virtual, uh, sorry, the Docker image, and you have uh, uh, downloaded the NCDF files, then from the from the same folder you can run this Docker run uh, command. This it is very important to run this from the same folder, so that uh, we can use this uh, uh, PWD uh, environment variables to link the uh, the. The, the tutorial material to the uh, to the uh, folder into the, into the into the container, and uh, the container that, that we're going uh, to run, as I said, contains your full Ophelia uh, uh, software stack as well as a Jupyter notebook uh, server and a set of uh, Python modules that can will be used uh, during the examples for visualization and uh, and uh, and the post processing of the of the notebooks. I'll copy also in this case the, the command on the chat might be easier for you to run. And uh, once um, you have run this command, you should see something like uh, in the in this slide in the in the terminal, this log log messages, and you should be able to uh, identify the uh, IP address of the of the Jupyter Notebook server, you can simply uh, copy and paste this in the in the in the web browser, and uh, then the Jupyter, the Jupyter Notebook server should, should open. Uh, and there's another question: Which folder do you mean by the same folder? Okay, the same folder is uh, uh, sorry, the one in the previous slide uh, is this uh, uh, H H HPDA and uh, and this training summer school 2021 HPDA uh, of India. I'll, Copy also this command into the chat. So this is a folder which contains uh, the full set of notebooks. You can see there's also the uh, uh, readme with the instruction and the uh, uh, get data script that can has to be used to download this Smith Finite CDF, uh, this Smith Finite CDF data. Uh, so coming back to this uh, slide, you can then just uh, copy and paste this into, into the web browser, and then the Jupyter notebook server should, should open. Uh, here it asks for uh, for the password. This is just done for uh, to simplify this process. You can just type Ophidia and uh, you should be logged into the into the system. And uh, and there you should find uh, you should uh, set the set of notebooks from the from the folder that uh, that we uh, bind it into this this container. I go into the notebook folder. And, and here we can see several uh, notebooks, in particular the Pyophilia Basics, which is the one that we are going to to use in the in the in the practical tutorial. So, um, in this case, maybe I can just pause for a few seconds to be sure that everyone was able to uh, have interest in in running this uh, and to uh, uh, start the uh, instance and uh, and connect to this. And uh, also, please let me know if there are any questions about uh, presentation in general and uh, 
about the about also this uh, uh, environment setup before we uh, move to the to the tutorial. Okay, good. So it seems that um, there are no questions. Yeah, the password is uh, of idea. Uh, just maybe you can then copy this in the this in the chat just to be sure that. Okay, and uh, so uh, I just here just put some some reference and further readings uh, related to what was. Uh, presented in these slides and you will find this in the slides. I will uh, send them uh, later uh, as soon as we end this, this session uh, so that you, you might be able to access them in the in the next days, I believe. And uh, so uh, this concludes my uh, introductory part. And uh, so before moving into the tutorial, I'll just check if there are any other questions. Uh, otherwise, I think we can, uh, we can move to the practical part. And okay, uh, before um, before um, closing the slide, uh, just wanted to mention if you if you'd like to understand more about uh, high performance analytics with Ophelia as well as the data visualization part with Paraview that will be presented by Niklas uh, um, in the in the following uh, session uh, today. So after after the break at three thirty, uh, I invite you to register to the high performance analytics and visualization training that we are organizing. Uh, as MCT and DKZ in the context of Easy Ways 2 uh, that will be held in a couple of weeks from the 13th to the 16th of September. Uh, so registration will be open until the 8th of, the, of September and uh, you can find uh, additional info on the event web page and, uh, and, and you will be able to access this from the, from the links uh, from, the, from the slide. 